There's a place called the Victory Newsstand. Victory Newsstand. Little fat guy there standing by the Victory Newsstand. And he's selling papers for three cents a piece and a nickel and a dime. You know, big deal when he sends a, sells a magazine for a quarter. He's got a big sign. Victory News Magazine. <laughs> victory Schmictory. Victory Circle. Victory Arch. You know what you can do with your victory. Norman, living in Indianapolis. 28 years old, the guy is his victory there. He told police yesterday that only a show of force, I'm quoting here, seemed to be the only way to cope with the machine that did him in. That's what Norman said. Doing his best for all of us, and we're laughing. Norman, Indianapolis. Tonight we salute you. Not many guys are saluting you, Norman, but we are. Blow that horn. That's it. Let them know it. Hello, Norm, Indianapolis. You're a long way, you know. Boy, you don't hear nothing in Indianapolis. Hey, Norman! Come out and play, Norman! Norman is not playing. Norman told officers that he lost a chance last September to job in Washington because he flunked the lie detector test. Since then, police quoted him as saying resentment had been building up in Norman against the machine, he says, was telling rotten, crummy lies about him. On Thursday night, Norman said he made up his mind to get revenge. And a worker in a travel agency next door to the office heard a shattering noise at about 10 p.m. It was a glass door being kicked in. Wielding a hammer found in the agency's office, the intruder, guess who was laying waste to the place, looking for that crummy, rotten, lying machine. Desks were torn over. Keys ripped from typewriters. Mirrors cracked. But the main target was that crummy, rotten, portable lie detector. It was smashed to smithereens. And paper from its guts was strewn throughout the entire fourth floor, a whole block. Police Lieutenant Jenkins said by the time he arrived, and I'm quoting him here, oh, it was a mess. Everything he could get to with that hammer was wrecked. Oh, boy. Especially that machine. Proclaiming that the machine was telling lies... Norman was taken off by the police, who charged him with breaking and entering, and they are considering a main charge of aggravated assault and murder against him. And so, Norman, tonight we can only say, oh, crying out loud, man, we know. And there's no going back, Norman. There ain't going to be no fight. And forget it, Dad. You're looked upon as a kook and a nut in your neighborhood. And you will be a kook and a nut. As long as you hit machines. You know what they said about Captain Ahab. Just because he went after that crummy whale. And you know what that whale did to his foot. <laughs> oh, boy. Believe me. Wait till one time they write a story called, um... Uh, called, um... Uh, gee, I don't know what you could call it. You can't call a coke machine Moby Dick. I don't know. Maybe you could. I could think of a couple of names I could call it. But nevertheless, they're going to write this story about this guy who chased this rotten, crummy machine from one IBM, one national cadre office to the next. And until finally he caught it. He ran into it, and he threw the harpoon at it. The next thing you know, he was seen going down the chute, pinioned against the graphs, lost forever in the great sea of statistics. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And the next day, somebody starts to write a book, and it says, Call me Ishmael. All I know is that I one time worked for this nut who got this job. (laughs) I told you this program was for lunatics and people who like red cabbage. Possibly both. I'm afraid I don't tell you no comforting things like Bob Dylan. 
I don't promise. No, no, paradise is in the sky. No pies in the clouds. Let's face it, friend, it is a madhouse. And we are all in it. And, by the way, for good reason. That's right. That's a, that's a raspberry. That's all, all deliberate, friend. <laughs> oh, that's it. He almost hit it, didn't he? Oh! And now what? Yeah, there are a couple of walls down around the place. He learned to blow the high note, and all it did was break all the windows, and he wound up on the pokey. Just thought you ought to know that in the middle of the week, the natives get restless. They sure do.